Hello um, and welcome uh, to our webinar today with Neomo Business School. My name is Nelly and I'll be the moderator on behalf of the Unimai team. In today's webinar, you're going to find out more about Neomo's Global Executive MBA program and its potential to transform your career. And I'm very happy to welcome our panelists today. Uh, first, I want to introduce uh, Kathleen Bobe, who is the Global EMBA Recruitment and Business Development Manager at Neoma. I also want to welcome three EMBA students, uh, Carol Martinez, Medad Bianc, and Nico Cho. Welcome everyone. Uh, we'll start with a brief pre presentation of Neoma Global EMBA program, followed by a discussion with Carol, Medad, and Nico, uh, who will share their experience with us. Uh, for everyone who is listening, you are welcome to ask questions anytime during the webinar using the Q&A box. All questions are, are welcome, so don't hesitate. So I now give the word to you, Kathleen. Thank you. Hello, can you see my presentation well? Yes, it's okay. Thank you very much. So welcome everyone. I'm very happy to host you during this one hour webinar about Neoma Global Executive MBA. Uh, I'm happy to, today to share uh, this uh, uh, session with three of our participants who are about to finish their Global Executive MBA. Uh, they have a lot to say about their international experience. All of them came to France, to Paris, to attend our uh, Global Executive MBA. Uh, they all come from different countries and continents uh, with different angles, and you will see uh, what's their path? Uh, I'm sure they will have a lot to tell. First, we'll start with an info session about Neoma Business School, which is a business school uh, which is quite well ranked and recognized in uh, the, the market of the French business school, where the sixth or the seventh, depending on the uh, ranking in France. And we're also very highly recognized internationally for our academic uh, excellence and our research. So what's in the Global Executive MBA is around three different types of words. We wanted to have in this program embrace um, different perspectives so that our participants are pushed to find out and discover different uh, angles on the business. They are inclined to foster their career development in a global world and also to envision a strategic and digital sustainability transformation of their organization. The curriculum structure is made out of two intake. So the first intake is that to come is, uh, is March 23, and the last intake was more October 23. Uh, actually, the follow so we have a cohort that is composed by people who started in October and people who will be starting in March. So the different types of program lengths is 15 months and 20 months, depending on when you start. Uh, the major difference it has, because it has no difference in terms of experience, uh, where the people who will be attending all the courses, all the immersions abroad or on site. They, it's the exact same program, but the program length is shorter uh, in March, and especially the capstone project has to be written in a shorter time period, while it's eight months for the, for the people who start in October uh, versus three months for the people who start in March. Both graduate in June uh, 20 or actually uh, people who started in October 22 and people who will be starting in March 23 will be graduating at the same time. I'll tell you more about the Kemba highlights and the way we described, uh, we, we defined uh, the pillars of, uh, of, the, of the program is around change your mindset, create value and innovate. And the way we wanted the participants to do that was around entrepreneurship, leadership, sustainability, and digitalization. Through that, they have a 300 and, uh, 360 degree view. How do we do that? Uh, in the program, we have an innovative pedagogy. We have a metaverse campus, which enable us to do uh, online virtual experience. And 
we also mix uh, with our participants, researchers who come to present their uh, work. And there is an exchange that's very uh, interesting between researchers who are doing their PhDs or professors who are working on their research and our participants. So exactly within the program, you uh, will find, I won't go through into details, but you will find a lot of different mix between on-campus activities industry immersions, international learning experience, uh, mixed with uh, a leadership program that's all around the professional growth of our participants, which cannot be done without growing personally. There are seminars abroad. Uh, this year, uh, we plan to bring the participants to uh, Sao Paulo in May for their innovation study trip, and in Accra in Ghana. The uh, study trip in Accra, um, we're, we're doing it for several years and it arises that uh, our participants were so inclined to know more on social entrepreneurship that it's now part of, our, of the program they will do over three months a social project outside of the course learning experience. They'll do another project, which is the social project, which will be around the Ghana trip uh, where we, we are hosted by startup incubators and entrepreneurs. Uh, there is the final course project, which is the capstone project. It's the major individual project that our participants have to do. It's how to connect dots together through the entire experience they had and make up with a strategy that will uh, bring them towards a project which will be either entrepreneurial or intrapreneurial. So who joins the Global Executive MBA? Who they are when they start? So in average, we have uh, the age of 40 people. Uh, there is a, a good mix between male and female. And also uh, they come from different countries. As you can see, France is well represented, uh, but we also host quite a lot of international participants. The, the countries where, uh, from where our participants are coming over the past three years, that's where what we found out that they were coming from the countries are, that are listed on this map. And I'm very excited because next March intake will, um, we will complete this map with new different countries. They uh, are from different types of industries when they start the program. Um, Various sectors is the most represented, but you can see that manufacturing and industrial service is highly represented in the sense that we have a lot of technical uh, background people who are coming to do their MBA, but not just them. We have various uh, profiles as well as entrepreneurs and as people who are coming from a uh, health industry or luxury industry, for example. Their job, what the start of their MBA is, uh, you can see this list uh, of, uh, of different type of uh, job position. Uh, as you can see, you, you have some people who are already CEOs, but some are only middle managers who are not recognized uh, yet as a high potential to grow. And they want to change their uh, profile to go from a place to another, either for career project uh, progression within their company or change the, their industry sector. For example, uh, it happens sometimes that we have profiles who are um, in oil and gas and who want to go for uh, electric uh, uh, energy. They, they are work already in energy, but they want to change sector. Uh, we also have other people who want to shift from technical towards manager and others who uh, want to start their company or to grow their own company. Uh, their position after graduation, so in terms of industry sector and companies, you can see several names. We have people uh, working at Hermes, we have people working at Pfizer, uh, from different type of, uh, of construction sector. Some of them also work for the army and they have different uh, positions like, uh, um, and I'm sorry, some, some of the job positions are made in France, but it's like CEO or business unit directors, 
or entrepreneurs or chief operation managers and so on. Uh, Neoma has the fourth largest French business school uh, to, to graduate. The network is super, super active. Wherever you are in the world, you can find a Neoma alumni. Uh, we work through, it works with chapters and uh, it, it's reunited with uh, a lot of different backgrounds. So in each country, we have a chapter and also we have industrial chapters. The particularity of our program is that we have uh, 2,300 MBA alumni and we have a local in Paris global executive MBA club and there are like 20 events uh, per year around uh, that are organized either in Paris or in our other campuses in Rouen or Reims, which are both located uh, east and west of Paris only for one hour. So it's a one hour train uh, experience. In terms of uh, funding, so the tuition fees in total uh, are 37,900 uh, euros. Uh, we also have early bird uh, and dates are on the website that you can find. Uh, most of them, uh, of the candidates who joined the program received the early birds, which is, uh, which is quite interesting. Uh, and we also gave some scholarships. Uh, some can go up to 10,000. We have different as well discounts. And uh, most in average uh, for the, the most recent cohort uh, have paid this type of tuition fees. Uh, 20, 28,500. We have a payment schedule uh, over three times, three different uh, pass installments. And we also have facilities to get a loan uh, with a French bank. But pay attention, it's better to have a guarantor if you want to ask for a loan in France. In order to apply uh, to the program, the most interesting uh, thing is that it's simple. It's all online. Uh, we host in the program people who are bachelor degrees uh, or equivalent uh, awarded and with a minimum of five years of work experience. It depends on each cohort. We can have like young people uh, who are uh, like senior professional, but young as an age, younger than 40 as the average age. And people who are like more than 50 or 55 who join the program. And it's very interesting to see the dynamics in it. So the application is in three steps. Uh, the first step is an online application file that needs to be submitted. We ask for a very recent English test. If you don't have it, it's okay. We can provide you one and an online video questionnaire. Plus uh, the interview with the jury will be made with a case study presentation and a motivation interview. We are usually very quick to provide you the answer after uh, each jury. Uh, it's within a week. If you'd like to stay in touch with us, uh, as especially my colleague and I, Virginie, uh, our recruitment manager and business development manager for the program, uh, you can flash this QR code in order to uh, take an appointment with us. Now, uh, I will take some questions on admission later on and um, and during the Q&A session that Nelly will uh, will arrange in the end of this uh, meeting. And now I will uh, ask for some questions uh, to our three participants, Carol, Medar and Nico, uh, who are here to respond and share about their international experience in France, especially at Neoma Business School. So, my first question is uh, to introduce yourself and uh, I will give the floor to Medar because he's the only man in this session. And uh, then Nico and Carol, you can, uh, you can give us a, a short presentation of yourself. So uh, where do you come from? What did you do before joining the Global Executive MBA? And, um, and what do you do as a job? Thank you very much, uh, Kathleen and Nelly, for this uh, great interview. Um, my name is Biang Medak Munja. I am from Cameroon. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I was an entrepreneur before I joined uh, the MBA, and I'm still an entrepreneur. Uh, 
basically I did importations from Istanbul, Turkey and do supply in uh, Cameroon, my home country. I also took uh, government contracts to, to deliver go uh, office materials to offices in, in schools and both uh, government offices. So currently I'm still an entrepreneur and I'm looking to graduate for my MBA in June. Thank you. Nico? Yes. Uh, thank you, Catalina and Nelly. Very happy that we can join this session today to share our experience. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So my name is Nico Cho. Uh, I came from Hong Kong uh, one and a half years ago, and then I started the executive MBA with Neoma since uh, October 2021. So now I'm at the stage of uh, finishing my uh, capstone project for the executive MBA, and we already finished all the courses. And then we are like, just like uh, Chica, what you just said, we are looking forward to graduate in June together. So now I live in Paris. Uh, and work-wise, I just started a marketing position with L'Oreal Travel Retail Worldwide last year. Uh, in the Paris office. So uh, it was an exciting opportunity and uh, everything went well, I guess. And now I'm converting into a permanent position. And uh, before I came to France, uh, I have been working in Hong Kong all my uh, last 10 years of life. And this is my first time living and also working in a new country to me. So uh, Neoma is my first step to come to France. So maybe in the uh, next few questions, we can share more of the experience about this part. And uh, maybe I will pass to Kaho to uh, introduce yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Nico. Hello, everyone. I hope um, our feedback will be insightful for you to, um, to go ahead in, in your decisional process. So my name is Carol. I'm currently based in, in Madrid in Spain. Um, originally, I grew up in, in France, in Strasbourg, in the north eastern part of France. Decided to move abroad for more than 70 years now. Uh, my latest position was as a sales account operation manager within the IT sector, where I have been working for more than 15 years now. Um, and I'm a transitioner. <laughs> so I have started my, my MBA together with Nico last October 2021. And from that time, I have decided to have a break on my professional life, but also on the personal side. And I'm very grateful for that, first of all, to myself and for the people I have had the chance to meet and to grow with during that uh, last almost two years. I'm currently finishing my capstone as well, which is related to social entrepreneurship. We'll be glad as well to share a bit more if you're interested in later on. Thank you. Thank you. So my next question is, why did you want to come to Paris and uh, why Neoma? Carol, you want to start? I can do that. <laughs> so um, in on the personal side, the, considering the MBA option, the EMBA in, in, in my personal situation, was I was really willing to do such, uh, let's say, immersion to the business world, not only within corporation, but also at entrepreneurial <laughs> level. That was kind of a dream some way, but also willing to close the loop with the, the entire 360 degree vision we, we mentioned before. So why Paris? Why Neoma? Well, when I started looking for which might be the best candidate <laughs> for me, I started logically uh, looking in, in, in Spain, but also in France, which are the two main countries I have been living in. And uh, I investigated the best option for me in terms of social entrepreneurship, continuous, uh, continuous improvement mindset was for me, Neoma appears the best option. Adding on the top of that, the fact that we had the option to study in English uh, with such level of um, professors in terms of diversity, country speaking, culturally speaking, but also in terms of um, in research and, and investment. So um, that will be the main reason I have decided to enroll with Neoma and uh, being okay to travel as well on a monthly basis to Paris or the different places we've been the chance to discover together. Mm -hmm. Nico? Yeah, 
Uh, so uh, for me, the reason is very simple. So before I came to France, I have been working in Hong Kong uh, with different uh, luxury companies, so including L'Oreal. So um, at that time, my last possession in Hong Kong before I came, I actually really love that job and I want to be someone important in the company, in this French company. So I was thinking to myself, just one day I woke up and then I was thinking, how do I make a difference instead of just sitting here in the office every day to wait for the chance to come? So I was just thinking, um, I, I was already old enough if I don't leave my comfort zone. So why not doing something different? Let's say go to the other country, uh, learn new things, uh, go into education again. And of course, uh, going into another circle also offer me a lot of chances to meet new people or expand my network. Let's say one day, if I don't want to work with my company again, who else I can work with or to explore something different in my life. So at that time, I was doing a lot of research, just like Kaho, what you just mentioned. I actually, I also have a list of uh, Excel spreadsheet all the uh, MBA school in France and also some other master degree that I might be interested in. So I draft an entire list, the duration of the course and also the price and also uh, like what is the um, uh, key pillars or the uh, main, uh, like the courses that the school would offer to me. So I have an entire list. And then at the end, I also pick Neoma because just like Kaho, it seems to be my best option in terms of all the duration and also the things that I'll be interested in learning. So that's how I uh, decided to pick Neoma. And uh, coming to France, uh, it is very important for me to step uh, forward in, in my career in the French company. So it appears to be a very, it's the best decision I have made for my life, honestly speaking. <laughs> Wow, impressive. Thank you, Nico. Neda? Uh, thank you, you Catalina. <laughs> for me, it was a very strategic decision to choose uh, France uh, for my MBA program. Uh, initially, I come, I started doing my entrepreneurial activity without uh, any management skills. I come from a law background as a bachelor's. So uh, having to scale my uh, entrepreneurial activity both in Cameroon as a French country and amongst the countries uh, or the neighboring countries of Cameroon, that's the Sema region, uh, they all speak French. So it was an easy decision for me to choose France as a uh, place to study my MBA, uh, not only because it's, it's France has the best uh, business schools, uh, not only in the world, but in, the, in not only in Europe, but all over the world, but also because it gives me the opportunity to enhance my French skills, uh, uh, to be able to interact with my partners and my customers all over the Sema region. I come from an English origin in Cameroon, so I needed to enhance my French skills. So it was a very strategic decision for me. So uh, looking at uh, schools in you know, business schools in France, uh, I was interested in the proposition of Neoma in the entrepreneurial and uh, value creation mindset. Uh, which is very important for me to be able to scale my business in the Sema region. Uh, I made some research too. I noticed that uh, in some countries, I needed to make a huge deposit, like Germany, Netherlands, and other countries. I need to make a huge deposit before moving to study. So I discovered that France didn't have this kind of requirements for me to uh, have to deposit a huge sum of money as a guarantee before moving from Africa to come to come and to get a visa to study in France. So it was uh, it was easy for me to decide on France. Thank you. So why do you think it will impact positively your career, Medar? Uh, I think uh, Neoma Business School stood as one of the schools that had uh, three accreditations, which I looked all over many uh, universities. I didn't, I didn't find uh, uh, many uh, business schools having three accreditations. So uh, I discovered that after having a an MBA from Neoma Business School, it will be well ranked and I will have credibility in front of my uh, suppliers and customers as well. Uh, also, I knew that I could be able to switch or do entrepreneurial activities from one uh, industry to another. I could move from the textile industry I was handling and go to construction and uh, any uh, sharing economy, so sharing economy kind of business model. So uh, it was easy for me to choose uh, Neoma and not, and I knew that it would give me the value to, to be able to get a good position if I want to 
participate in government activities in Cameroon. So it would give me the credibility in front of, of my business partners. Thank you. Carol? So for me, it's the, um, the alignment between the inner uh, the inner aspect and the external one. I, I have found some peace, inner peace, uh, which just at the end of the day unleash my relationship with the world and how I want to interact within the professional world as well as an entrepreneur, as an executive. So um, external, externally speaking, <clears throat> of course, Neoma is a famous and renowned um, business school so it definitely tells a lot already in terms of the program itself what we have been studying and as mentioned before with the faculty were luckily to to have uh, in the infrastructure of the school is also showing um, the level the quality that the school is bringing to our career and to bring it to the external world. So this is one of the aspect, and as mentioned before, the inner peace I found out because for me as a transitioner, it was like, okay, take some time. And the support related to the changer mindset, all the coaching aspect of the program, which is not as common everywhere, uh, really brings a lot to that inner peace. So align the two of them and go to the world. It's like, it's flowing some way. So this is what I think is bringing me, what, sorry, Neoma is really bringing me on that experience. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great. So uh, for me, uh, before I came here, my goal was very clear that I want to uh, rejoin the same group in the headquarter in Paris. So for me, practically speaking, coming to France for my master's degree uh, grants me the eligibility to apply for a job. So I will be able to get into the employment system after I graduated from the uh, MBA. And also knowing the culture of my company, I believe that would increase the chance um, for me to get an offer. So uh, this is uh, very clear for me. And then uh, secondly, I think uh, since most of the headquarters of the luxury beauty companies are in Paris, so if I'm able to secure a position here, that would definitely open up my a lot of future opportunities for me. So that's why getting uh, MBA here is uh, my step to uh, get to um, some uh, future um, dreams of my life. Thank you. So why did you did it make sense for you to come to France uh, while living in a foreign country? What 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 was the main uh, aspect of, of living here? I mean, for your professional career and professionally why did it make sense for you? Can you say that again? I don't understand. Why did it make sense for you to come to France while living in a foreign country before? Um, I, I think you're not asking about like my journey to France. Yes. Well, you wanted, you decided to come to France for a reason, both professionally and personally. And I'm interested for our audience to know why, what, okay. what brought you here out of, um, My... it can be like tangible and intangible things, but what brought you here? Why did it make sense in your past and life past and career past? Okay, for me, it was the idea of having to uh, study an MBA in a French community where I would be able to scale my business activities in the French community back home in Africa, given that I come from a French country and the neighboring countries around me are French speaking also. Uh, I want to scale my business around the CIMAC regions of Cameroon. So uh, that is why I knew that coming to France would give me the kind of uh, uh, managed uh, entrepreneurial knowledge which I need to penetrate into this into this market and the decision to like come and live in France while uh, uh, studying my MBA was based on the fact that I discovered that it actually uh, cost a little too much going back to Africa after every seminar and coming back so uh, moving forward with that I got a lot of assistance from uh, Neoma to look for an apartment where I could stay and also not too far from school 
So it took, was easy for me to settle in France and do this MBA. Thank you. And uh, on the logistical side, how did you prepare your move to France? Yeah, uh, it, for me, it wasn't complicated at the level of looking for a university because as I already explained, I, I, do some, I did some research. I discovered that Neuma Business School had uh, three good accreditations and it targeted value creation and entrepreneurial mindset, which were things that I was really interested in. I also got some references from people that live in France that have studied in France. They recommended to me that Neuma is a very top business school and it's very much recognized both in Europe and back in Africa. So my decision for Neuma Business School was very easy. On that path, I submitted an application on Campus France uh, for a student visa. So after that, I got a reply within a few days and they gave me a certificate to deposit at the French embassy in Cameroon to get a visa. So I deposited at the embassy uh, to get a visa. They gave me a reply within 10 days and the passport came back to me with the visa. Uh, moving forward, I had uh, discussed uh, accommodation with uh, Neoma Business School. They had proposed me some accommodation. So I look, looked on the website to secure this accommodation. Coming to France, I had this accommodation and everything moved on slowly, uh, very nicely with the MBA program. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> and I hope it will encourage other people to do so. And how about you, Nico and Carol? How was your uh, logistical experience to, to come to France? And was there a meaning behind it? Mm. Uh, in my case, since I'm not a EU citizen, so again, I will need to apply for a student visa to stay in France for more than six months. So first I need to apply uh, for the visa with the French consulate and also uh, with the offer uh, from Neoma and the approval from uh, Campus France to validate my offer. So I, at the end, I got a visa for one year until October last year. But actually my visa only got approved one day before my uh, departure to France. So if you can just uh, start the application as early as possible. And uh, for me living in France, actually the uh, most asked questions I have received uh, uh, since one and a half years ago uh, is about why, why you pick France? Why didn't you pick other Asian countries like Singapore? They also have a lot of uh, professional uh, opportunities because for me, I, I can't speak French. I'm still learning. I think maximum I would say I am between level A1 and level A2 of French language. So for me living in France, uh, I have quite a bit of difficulties, even when I go to restaurants. And of course, going to Neoma is not an issue because all the classes are taught in uh, English. And also our French group, they are very kind. They uh, like teach me French all the time. So, uh, but for living in France, it's a little bit difficult. But the other side is that all the, the environment that we are living in here in Paris and also the food and the good wine, the cheese and also um, the pace of the society is very different from where I grew up, which is in Hong Kong. So for me to be able to live in a totally different country, I still feel very excited. And uh, I believe um, this is a really cool experience for me to also grow up internally and also to, to explore a new um, aspect of life. So it's a very cool experience, honestly. Thank you for being so positive. I, I want to learn more about the difficulties. What did you find uh, difficult? Because some of the people who are listening to us uh, are aiming for do, to do their MBA abroad and they're professional, they don't know if they should keep their job or not, they don't know about their visa experience. You both uh, were able to explain it, which, uh, which is very interesting to, to, to hear because you have two different uh, a story about behind uh, uh, you, before, and especially before you started the MBA. So it's, uh, what did you find the most difficult was um, actually, I think the most difficult part is actually some internal struggle because you know that you're going to face some a lot of uncertainties that you, you might not be able to expect before. So for people like me that I at least would expect certain level of um, feasibilities on things, I guess it's actually the same for most of the people because when you grow up, you 
you can't really just let your life go go with the flow. You want to take control of something, uh, especially in the financial part. So for me, the biggest struggles is the internal debates that if I am making the right decision and if if I'm really going to a new country that I can't even speak the language, am I going to survive all these internal struggles? But honestly, you I guess you also, you can expect my answer is that after like one year, after you settle down, everything seems to be going well. You started to think, why am I thinking so much at the beginning? And uh, actually, after this one and a half year, what, what I learned most is that um, Sometimes the uncertainties in life is the best way for you to discover some beauties in life that I didn't expect to happen. And that's the most exciting part of life, I guess. And I'm very happy to have made this decision. Um, but of course, you need to also expect you have to uh, make some effort to learn new language and to build your new circle in a uh, new society. That's a must. And also, when you are trying to apply for an executive MBA, like most of us, you must have a job on the side. So you might have to balance a little bit about the time that you might need to spend at work, the time that you can you need to spend at the executive MBA and also maybe your family or your kids. So think ahead and also try the best you can because actually you don't need to see the entire stairways in front of you before you can take the first step. This is what I have been telling myself and it's very true. Thank you. Adeline, can you lead me to come a little bit into the difficulties? Uh, to me, well, when I was moving, I was really worried because I had to leave my business back in Cameroon and come to France and uh, study this MBA. I didn't know how things would turn up like. Uh, but uh, to my surprise, I discovered that after I've been in the MBA for a few months, I could use some of the knowledge I have acquired from the MBA and actually implement or delegate my team back home in Cameroon. I could delegate people I trust to manage my business for me and I just supervise them from an helicopter view. I, I set... Uh, uh, goals on my businesses and like uh, I did monthly checkups on if they are attaining the objectives they are doing. I To me, it's like it's a transformational thing. Like it made me believe that I could actually entrust my business to other people using the knowledge I acquired and rather concentrate on other interesting uh, things that I could be doing outside my business. Also, moving to France, I thought I would have the difficulties of missing my family and uh, missing my friends back home. But it was an opening for me to learn to to like embrace other people in life, both professionally and in the uh, individual uh, standpoint of my life. So I have new friends across all over Europe now, and uh, it's really interesting. So it's it 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 stood like an opening for me. My difficulty transformed to a new opening for me to move to France. Thank you, both of you. I mean, you both come from uh, different continents to attend the Global Executive MBA program at Noma, which is actually amazing to see. If we think about it, uh, it's a strong achievement as well. I mean, you definitely changed life. Uh, for, for Nico, you, you left your job to find another and, and specific ideas of uh, what it is like to live in Europe. And for you, Medor, you left the company behind and friends and family and how it is to feel, uh, okay, so insecure because you have to let things go uh, the way they should go and uh, at the best conditions you, you managed. So it's, it's very interesting to hear you both. Now I want to hear Carol on her side because Carol, you grew up in France and now you live as an adult. Your adult life is, a, is more like a, uh, an abroad life for us, but uh, now it's your home to live in, a, in a Madrid for so many years and you decided to do the commute and to come every month for your session uh, because uh, I have not said it, but the program is uh, one uh, session per month on campus every month. So you had to do the commute. How did you find that? So um, in one side, it's easier compared to the experience that uh, Meda and Nico had in the sense that I am a EU citizen. And on the top of that, I have both nationalities. So it's like 
home and home, <laughs> moving from one home to the other one. Um, so on that legal aspect, the visa aspect, it was way easier. Now, uh, considering the logistic behind it, logistic together with the economical part, as Nico mentioned, you need to think ahead. In my situation, um, I knew that within my transition, Spain and where I live, which is right in the mountains, it's somewhere 65 kilometer northeastern western part of Madrid. I didn't want to live in, in the city. I want to live in the mountain. That was very important for me to not only go through my spreadsheet, my Excel spreadsheet that I usually do to take a rational decision, but also <laughs> be aware about the emotional one. And when I understood that whatever happens, what is going to be here as a pillar will be <laughs> sustainability around such um, privilege, uh, environmental, physical part of where I live, I couldn't decide to go to live to France unless to another capital city like Paris, right? So logistic, logistically speaking, you need them to value, is it manageable <clears throat> in terms of within the pandemic, <laughs> in terms of uh, frequency of travel, uh, economy of the traveling, all the documentation you need because of vaccine and so on. You will be on site at your home, like with your bed and so on, three months, three weeks a month, but there is one entire where you're out. Is it okay? Is it manageable? So um, this is something very personal, I believe. And the situation of each of, of the person interesting in such a program needs to be very well valued. Um, I wanted to link with something that Nico said with the thinker head. I think it was so, so well, so don't get me wrong, so basic, but so deeply true. <laughs> when you have a family, when you have a work, but either if you do not have a family or you do not have a work, um, for me, this when I decided to join as a transitioner, I said my MBA is priority one during these two years. And I started to struggle some way. No, because I, I realized that at the end of the day, I'm a transitioner. I was really looking for reestablish some balance being fully current with myself. And when I really understood that, not only saw it, but understood that and came back to the origins of why did I decide to go into that MBA direction, this very moment of life, I understood it was one of the priorities, but the biggest one was myself. And when this moment arrived, it's when I really started to enjoy and take the best of the MBA. So yes, think ahead. <laughs> think ahead and, uh, and we were talking about decision making, you were talking about difficulties and thank you. The, I mean, I thank the three of you for being so honest and so uh, transparent about what, was, what you found difficult, what you enjoyed as well. Uh, because the, the, the part that you enjoyed is like bigger than the, the, the size that was difficult. So it's not what you remember according to what I hear, which is totally uh, uh, positive. And I, I really encourage you for this. But I also like the fact that you um, see things, the, the, the way uh, it, um, uh, you, you, you live things at your own path. And it's, it's very important to listen to yourself and listen to you, the way uh, the program brings you uh, because you it's a lot. It's a lot of learning. It's a lot of different course subjects. It's a lot of projects themselves. I was talking about the, the Ghana business, the, the Ghana international learning experience. Uh, there was also a, a, another uh, trip last year, which was uh, in New York. There was another opportunity for you, Nico, that you took to go to uh, attend some courses abroad uh, to a, with a partnering school in Porto Business School, um, and also the Chamonix, uh, which is in the fresh French Alps in the mountain. We have a, a risk management seminar, which is based on the rescue seminar, uh, on, on the rescue principles, and, uh, and it's led by a, a branch of uh, the French army that we call the uh, Gendarmerie Nationale. And uh, Nico and Meda, you were 
uh, one of those who went there to rescue some people and did the helicopter experience. So I'm sure you have a lot to, to, to share about that. Um, I have I have few other questions. I mean, uh, I know we're running out of time, so we still have uh, five more minutes to 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 get your feedback about uh, two things. I'll ask two questions in once, according to the time we have left, and then we want to to keep ten minutes for the Q and A session. So two questions in one. The first thing is. Um, what has made the most, the bigger impact on you all throughout your MBA? Okay. And the second one is, what is the advice you'd like to give to the people who are listening to us? And who would like to join the Global Executive MBA at Neoma Business School? I let you choose the one who starts. Okay, I'll go first. Sure. <laughs> um, I, I, um, I would say for me, um, the global, the executive global MBA has developed me a lot personally and both professionally. Uh, it has made me to be able to achieve things that already at this standpoint, I'm doing my capstone project. At this standpoint, I'm able to uh, achieve the things that I thought I would achieve after the MBA. I've already executed most of them. My company in Cameroon is going digital and I, I'm already putting in place of uh, uh, creating value in all other, in other countries around Africa, which is something I wanted to do after the MBA. I find myself doing that already within the MBA. Um, I find myself now interested in other projects that I didn't think of before I started the MBA. So this is what the MBA has brought me. Uh, on the part of advising the people that are wishing to join this MBA, I would say, just relax. It's a transformational journey. It's like a ritual. You go, you list, you, you, you have doubt about yourself on what you don't know. You want answers to certain things. Uh, uh, you would get these answers. You would have knowledge on what you want to do. You would have opportunities to choose from. You would know what you want to do after your career or, uh, or, or, or maybe change industry. You would have answers, a lot of options from which you want to select with. I would say just relax, enjoy the journey and make friends, network with people. This is also another part I have gained. And I can, I can call colleagues and cohorts and like talk to them about things that I have challenges in. We have this. We have this family. We have this family familiarity thing in, in it. So, uh, just relax and enjoy it. You are gonna get what you want at the end of the MBA. Thank you. Who's next? Oh. Okay, I I can go then. So for me, what I will take as the best experience within the MBA will be the cohort and the ambiguity management. Uh, the cohort is just your best friend. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big diversity of different people from different backgrounds in terms of culture, personal life, professional life, and we just build an entire self-being, self-sufficient, and just um, being a, the best support you can have during that experience. And the ambiguity management. Uh, it's like the MBA taught me that ambiguity is a bridge. When you start walking on the bridge, like the one that Medar has behind him, <laughs> San Francisco, <laughs> no, I'm being, being more serious. So you start at the beginning of the bridge and you can barely see what is in the other side. And you're still walking, you're in the middle, you see a bit more, but it's not that clear. It's still being a bit blur and you go to the end, you see a bit more. But in the meantime, you just realize that it's okay if you can't see very well the end. You know you're going farther. You know that you're just not necessarily improving, but growing, which is more than enough. And uh, my advice, take it as a lab experience in a very safe environment, so enjoy it. <laughs> sure. And to add on to what uh, Kaho and Meta, you just mentioned about uh, the cohort is like a family or best friends of each other. I just want to add a note 
is um, that this comment is not exaggerating at all because our group is like 10, 15 people, much smaller than the usual uh, academic cohort. So we get a lot of chance to uh, exchange and also like during the classes or um, after the classes. So we have a lot of chances to get together and to exchange views and experience or whatever hot topics that we are trying to exchange with each other. So this entire experience, I think it made everyone change. So I remember in our last course in Ghana, I had a very interesting uh, conversation with some of the participants in the cohort. So we were just saying, uh, uh, participant A, I remember the first day when I met him or met her, he was like this, this, this and this. And today he or she just changed a lot. And the change is totally couldn't imagine on day one when we met that person. So we were just discussing, but there is no magic in the executive MBA. How can someone change so much? So our conclusion is that um, actually, the executive MBA helped to bring out the best version of each of us, no matter your self-confidence, your academic knowledge, or just an experience to work with people from the other culture or nationalities, whatever it helps, it just makes you a better person. So that's not something that you can get from uh, a textbook. It's about the experience that you have had during these one and a half years. So. This is my recommendation. And also if you, I'm sure you have a lot of uncertainties and a lot of questions. So the best thing you can do right now is to understand as much as you can, maybe to connect with Kathleen, Virginie, or any of us. <clears throat> we are very happy to share our experience with you. Thank you, Nico. Um, I'm just uh, sharing a little, my absolutely very end, Sorry, I just stopped sharing. I just wanted to share uh, our contact details. I'll just go back to that later on. Nelly, the floor is yours. I think we need to uh, move on to the Q&A session. Thank you very much, everyone, for this um, insightful session. Indeed, we have a few questions in the Q&A box. For everyone who is listening, you still have time to ask, so don't hesitate. And uh, Kathleen, I suggest we start with a couple of questions for you, just to give uh, time to uh, Carol Medard and Nico to take a breath. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, we have um, someone here with a master's degree in elect um, electrical engineering. Um, and maybe this person is wondering, should uh, he continue on the same path or maybe considering EMBA? Uh, so my question is, um, is this background suitable for EMBA? In, in general, what kind of educational background do you seek in your, um, in, in your recruits, in your potential uh, students? Actually, we, we don't have like a specific background that we pick up. Uh, it's, uh, it, I don't know if you remember this, uh, this campaign from McDonald's. It was like, come as you are. It's a bit the same. We, we advise uh, senior professionals, uh, either senior in their position or senior uh, as, uh, as experienced uh, person in life. And they usually come with different aspects. I was saying in the presentation that we had people who are more from coming from technical who would like to um, get some more experience on management in order for them to be recognized uh, as potentials to grow uh, and, for example, conduct a business unit. So usually a technical background, uh, if, you, if you add to the technical background an MBA competency, it's always a good match in order um, to grow uh, during the career because it, it makes both. It's usually difficult to change industry like total industry if uh, you're an engineer in construction for example it's very it will be hard to get the right network and the the, the personal branding recognition to be hired in a uh, in finance for example so i would not it's not something i would recommend that's also why we have during the program uh, some individual coaching session with a uh, certified coach who are here to advise all throughout the the, the session the, the I mean, also at the MBA uh, sessions. So it's it's a time to uh, stop thinking about the courses and start thinking about what's next and what's how do you build your professional project and uh, and and your 
professional growth. Yeah, yeah. And uh, actually, we have a similar question related to the qualities one needs to, um, I guess, you know, uh, apply and then succeed in the program. What qualities and skills you seek in a potential student? Um, uh, I would say there are three angles. The one, the first one is to be emotionally ready is uh, the second one is to be financially financially ready to spend it. And the third one, which is last but not least, it's usually the one that people bring the first uh, is where do I stand in my career? And in terms of, of um, qualities, uh, the jury will will ask the student, each candidate to provide quite a long uh, answers and actually detailed answers, which will mix their professional and personal growth through life until now, until the moment they apply. So uh, emotional uh, maturity, when I said that, it's also because it relates to uh, the, cap the capabilities of the person to reflect on its own path. What did I do before? Where am I now? And what do I want to do next? Or what I am, am I aiming for in the near future? And any candidate don't have to have a very specific uh, project. They, they can just come because they feel they're struggling in their um, a job position or industry and they want to explore new things and as I was saying envision embrace foster those are like um, angles we'd like to investigate and we're aiming to investigate through the uh, the, the ambitions we did around which we designed the program which are change your mindset it's about emotional intelligence uh, create value it's about how to bring value to your company and to your work and with this 360 degree views, which is uh, known through um, strategic courses, finance courses, uh, all the basics, all the pillars that you can find in any company in order for, for you to understand what the other one is doing in order to uh, run the company. So mm -hmm. that's basically it. <laughs> I think this gives a really good picture. Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, I'll take a question. Um, uh, maybe something that um, Carol, Madara, or Nico can um, answer. Um, how busy was your schedule? Did you have time for social activities and family? So I guess it'd be different for each one of you. Uh, but maybe uh, if you can share what is there outside of you know classes. Oh, for for me. This was the, one of the reasons that made me select uh, choose uh, Neoma Business School because of the flexibility the program actually offers to you as a student. Like you have uh, classes just one week in a month, and it's a fast track. You study like all day, and I actually have the uh, rest of the month to like to do other activities, talk to my family, visit friends, and uh, coordinate my pro other professional activities. So it's really flexible and. Uh, I would say where the work was a little bit intense outside the class was when maybe I need to like take time to study the case studies, do the uh, assignments that I need to we needed to do to get a complete understanding of the practical cases we have in this in this in this program. So that was it for my own side. Thank you. Um, for me, um, since um, I, I didn't really have a job or a family at the time when I started the executive MBA, so for me, it's relatively easier to manage, like uh, what Meta you just mentioned, the classes are like one entire week, like four to five days a week uh, in a month. So after you finish that week, you wait for the next month, and then that week in the next month comes again. Before that week, you have to do some uh, case studies, preparation of the classes, or maybe some simple assignment to finish, to prepare before the classes start. So it's quite manageable. But when I look at some other participants in the cohort who uh, have a job at the same time, of course, they would have to squeeze time to uh, do some assignment, do some preparation. But I think it looks like it is manageable. <laughs> what about you, Kaho? What do you think? 
I joined you with the family and the and the work part of it. I started with none of the two. Uh, as I mentioned before, the MBA for me became very important, but it was not my P1 during the year because I was willing to take care of more aspects of my own life. Indeed, I never spend that much time on um, social things. I'm usually, ah, I have a Ten, I'm, I, t I tend to be a bit workaholic when I work. So it was good <laughs> not being working for me during the MBA, but I also did things I never tried before and wanted so much to do. So I had time for social life and both of them were kind of um, synergical at the end of the day within my own and personal and desired uh, transition phase. Mm -hmm. It's great. It's great to hear all um, about your experience. Um, okay, so we, uh, we have one last question that's related to more like uh, logistics. Um, regarding the study tours, how do you manage visa? Does Neoma help? Um, you know, you talk a lot about visas, maybe shortly. Yes, about about the visa things is that we have um, we have a whole website which is about the student life. Uh, as Neoma exists uh, uh, since for a long time now, <laughs> and uh, we have a lot of different programs who uh, relate to uh, foreigners who would like to come to st for their studies. So we have a whole uh, student life uh, process that's uh, that's uh, ready. Uh, potentially, we can help with visa letters. Uh, most of the time. Uh, if it's a visa uh, to grow for uh, an international learning experience, for example, I mentioned Accra, Ghana, and I also mentioned Brazil and Sao Paulo, uh, it happened that sometimes to some destination, uh, people can get their visa. It can be the case for uh, the USA. Uh, that's why we decided this year to move dif uh, to different places. Um, most of the time, it's okay. It's we we have. I mean, our participants happen to get their visa. On the other on the other hand, if the question relates to the visa um, uh, procedure before the program starts, it really depends on each cases, and we see it one by one. Uh, sometimes they get a student visa. Sometimes they get a tourist visa. Sometimes they get. Um, uh, so tourist visa means that uh, every so often they have to leave and ask for a new uh, a tourist visa and leave the country. So it, it happens, but people make it. Most of the time people make it and, and we give support so most of the time one to one. Uh, just, to, just to add on the workload and, and personal activities, of course, it's it's hard for people who uh, are doing their MBA, and I'm thinking a lot about people who are more local, uh, who are more in France or in, uh, in 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 Switzerland, for example, or uh, who are doing the commute with the within their doing their job. We had someone based in in Germany in the past, and he was uh, coming every so often for his courses. But it also happened that he took some classes online. Uh, either with our Chinese cohorts, uh, because we have uh, the program is run as well in Iran and as well as in Shanghai in China. And it happened that some students can take the, the courses over there. We also have academic uh, programs, uh, academic partnerships in Porto and in Milano. Uh, so we can also do some exchange courses uh, and also in order to keep uh, some activities and personal life. I have to be honest, it has to be a little and a little, and a little, and a little, and a big side of it will be both prof professional life and uh, an MBA. So you have to take a habit to watch your uh, MBA working session during your week. It has to be a habit, like when you want to do sport and reintegrate sport during your work week. That's it. Great, great. Um, okay, if you have one more minute, I have the perfect question uh, for the oh. end, just came in. Uh, for our students, um, what is the best memory of the program that you have? So if for each one of you, super shortly, uh, how, you know, the best experience memory you have from the program? Um, for me, the best experiences would be the fact that I could oh, wake up this month and 
I knew that I was attending the seminar at a different location from what I attended the last time. And to crown it all, where I like said, wow, this is it, was when I attended the uh, Shamonic seminar on crisis management on high mountains. Like I had to do a lot of things that I've never done before. It was a lifetime experience for me. And I don't think in life, I'm, I may not have the chance to uh, experience what I did experience in Chamonix. Like the love within the professionals that were training us and the confidence we could uh, install on them, not knowing them, but they could, we could trust them. And it, it made me to know more of my cohort members like Nico and uh, um, Emmanuel, the people that participated, it got to make me know them very well. And Nico did many things that encouraged me to to do a lot, a lot of a lot of things that I didn't think I could do. So that was my best part of the of the program so far. Thank you very much. That's true. That's true. Um, I think we we had too much sweet memories. But one thing I can tell you now is that I think someone in the previous cohort told us that uh, he he felt empty after he finished all the courses at Mioma. He felt like he is missing some part of his life because he no longer need to go to Neoma once a month and like that. So now I really uh, feel the same because it's like after you finish, uh, of course we achieved something, but that relationship between us and the memories experience between us is like, I really want to go through it again if I have the chance. Uh, for me, well, same. I mean, there are a lot of, I think I have two. Uh, the biggest one will be the after class. We usually let's said, let's meet at our headquarter and uh, have a coffee, beer, whatever you want to have a drink and just talk a bit. And it's as insightful sometimes <laughs> as the class itself because it's complementary some some way and you know before we said we are all the best friends word for the best and for the bad and the ugly because sometimes you have some friction but friction is also part of the process so the headquarter meeting <laughs> the, this time for a drink all together for the good the bad and the ugly for me is even if it's a lot of different moments it's the biggest best memory I have definitely and uh, well the second one was Ghana <laughs> which was for me very important uh, well in ve I'm very attracted by the African continent which is as big but being very concrete in in the western part of Africa so uh, very disruptive in a very good way mm -hmm. thank you very much everyone for sharing your experience uh, Catherine Nelly. I'm giving the word to Nelly. you for if you permit me, I'd like to share a little bit about uh, oh, the fact that uh, work and the program was tight for some people. Like some people took it too, it was, it was too tight for some people. But for me, it rather helped me to be more organized and disciplined. Like I learned to do things on time and take things seriously and put a lot of quality in what I do. So it was, uh, it was challenging within the program. But at the end of the day, you discover that you actually grow as a person, as a profession, you grow and it makes, it makes a lot of sense to me right now. Great, great. Um, no more questions in the Q&A box. Uh, Kathleen, any final words before saying goodbye to, to our attendees? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Medar, Carol, Nico, Nali, for this organization. Uh, it, I had a, a good, very good time listening to your uh, past and, and memories as well. Uh, on the other hand, especially to our attendees, my colleague and I, Virginie, as I said, uh, we are ready to have any meeting anytime. Feel free to uh, uh, come and join. Uh, take book your appointment. We can talk for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 35 minutes, one hour at least. Ask for advice. If you want to know more, you need to have a personal session. So feel free to come, ask for advice. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for joining. Bye-bye, everyone.